Bienvenidos, sangrones, to another episode of the Bleed Lows Podcast. This episode of the Bleed Lows Podcast is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online continues to be your number one source for all your basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. With up to the minute odds, stats, and trends, you can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in game live betting, contests, and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering pl platform anytime from your desktop, desktop or your mobile devices. Head to Bet Online today to become a part of the team. And remember to use the promo code BELIEVE, B L E A V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. Bienvenidos, sangrones. And I see we already got Michael Negrete is on the line and Simeon and uh, hey, Canelo's joining us. Alonzo's here. Babyface is coming us to us live from uh, he is at spring training. He's at Camelback Ranch and I think he's in the Winnebago from Spaceballs. Right, Babyface? Do you still have the, that Winnebago? I do, but it, it's not the one I'm in this time around. I had to, I had to rent one because stuff needed to be done to that one. It needs a lot of lot of care sometimes, a lot of maintenance. So I had to go ahead and just rent a different Winnebago this time. Wow, look at you big time. You, I didn't even know you could rent Winnebagos. Where do you rent a Winnebago? There's a site. Go to, it's like Cruise America, something like that, and you just pick your, your RV that you want to rent, the size, and go, go in, dig it, and you're off. Juan, there's this thing called the internet. It's fucking crazy. You can find not my anything. No, not not like that. I I still go using the yellow pages. I'm going through the yellow pages <laughs> and all that. Either that, or actually, I'm calling up all my family members and asking them, "Hey, do you know where I can get this?" Um, but let's say hi to some of the people here on the live. Uh, where you got uh, Simeon, como estas? Denny, what's up, guys? Hey, uh, Denny's already counting down the days because. We're actually going to have live baseball that we can react to. Dodgers and the show pods play tomorrow in spring training. So no longer do we have to overanalyze Shohei Otani taking batting practice. I have some thoughts on that because I love how everybody's so impressed with Shohei hitting home runs. It's batting practice. Have any of you guys been to a game? Have you seen all the home runs that those players hit before the game starts? Because there's a guy who's throwing it right down the middle. But I can't wait for games to start so we can actually talk about some other things. Uh, hey, el presidente de la comunidad de los guapos is in the house, Carlos Sanchez. I, I know he needs saving. He's some at some sort of fundraiser. Uh, presidente, I hope everything is fine. Uh, Jorge Larios, uh, Antonino Rendon, plus Mandred, fanatics hate baseball. Look, I know I've heard that people think Anthony Rendon should be the next uh, MLB commissioner because he loves baseball so much. I've heard this one. Michael Carrillo is in the live. I feel like I haven't seen you in a while, my friend. Daniel, greetings, everyone. Inland Empire is representing. Adrian Rod Rodriguez, saludos, sangrones. Happy hub day. This is great. We got all the usuals are in here. Dennis Gonzalez, hola, familia. How are we feeling? Uh, Doom Sal is here. James Rodriguez is here. Michael Negrete, welcome back. Juan the Macho Man Savage. How was Yosemite? Now, well, Alicia's in Yosemite. Uh, if you go and follow her on the social medias, she's giving you a whole tour of a uh, Yosemite. Um, Denny, yes, but it is Shohei in Dodger Blue. So, Michael Negrete, just because you made my day with that macho man, Randy Savage, I'm going to give you, oh, oh no. yeah, oh, boy. dig it, brother. All right. So before we go to Babyface to give us the update of how things went today in spring training, we have to lead with what is probably the biggest news out there, and that is Shohei Habla Español. And Alonzo has said this for the longest time that Shohei probably speaks better Spanish than he does English. So I'm going to go to Alonzo on this one. Alonzo, the fact that Shohei said fanáticos, that he, the way Shohei, honestly, dude, his accent sounded pretty clear and clean to me. Like, I feel like his Spanish was better than people that I know who tell me they speak Spanish. What is your analysis on Shohei hablando español? Uh, the analysis, he speaks better Spanish than you. So, I mean, the fact that he does. How just, dare you, sir? How saying, dare you, sir? I'm just saying, bro. Um, I am a Mexican-American. 
I am ESL I'm just, por vida. ESL <laughs> por vida, my friend. ESL por vida. No, I mean, listen, the, my biggest takeaway from that is he's gelling with the clubhouse. They're having a good time. That matters more than anything else because fuck them. Because they're going to, I mean, everything that they're going to do to piggyback on something that you said is going to be overanalyzed anyway, right? So might as well have a bunch of fun in the process. And again, I mean, the thing that they're doing is they're also humanizing the guy. I mean, he's, he's ever, all things considered, he's a, from everyone I have ever heard that's been around him. He's a stand up human being and no one will ever question that. He's not a red ass. He's not a douchebag. And at the end of the day, unicorns are going to unicorn, right? And this is just another thing. And is what I assume they the unicorns have little pouches with fairy dust in them that they spray at people who, you know, hablando cosas malas en español. Uh, but, you know, it, it's, man, it's cool. It's just cool to see him vibing. And to your point, I don't want to overanalyze anything that Shohei Otani does anymore because I am so happy baseball's tomorrow. Exactly. Uh, I want to say hi to CB. First time being able to catch a live. It's modelo time. All right, CP. See, and, oh, ladies and gentlemen, he is in the house. Sports empire. Oh, he's alive. And so when people were making fun of my Spanish, sports empire was there to stand up for me because as sports empire says, I'm just here for the common man. That's right, sports empire, oh. because I'm the son of a plumber. I'm a son. I'm the common man. Uh, Dennis Gonzalez. Okay, here we go. How many Angel fans are dying inside watching Shohei enjoy himself? Oh, dude. Uh, the, he came out of witness protection, a whole different man. And I'm so happy for him. I love that you came in with that, Dennis, because it leads me. Canelo, I kept seeing this narrative that, oh, my God, look how happy Shohei is. <laughs> look at him, you know. And it's like, look. Everybody on the Angels last year, everything we heard, they all said he was a great teammate. We saw his celebrations in the in the dugout. Yeah, he wasn't happy because his team wasn't winning. But for the most part, I, I think Shohei had personality. It's just as Alonzo says, he was in the witness protection program. And now he has the biggest stage ever. Like he has a Dodgers organization that understands how social media works and they're going to stage these little events. And I, this is a giant marketing ploy. And this, these guys know what they're doing, right? Canelo. Yeah. I mean, you hit the nail right on the head there. You know, I think we've been talking about it for weeks. You know, we knew the Dodgers, they know how to market their players. Well, they were definitely going to milk every single opportunity. I'm pretty sure we'll talk about it throughout this show. Anything Otani related will be posted. It'll be posted on social media. They will be posting videos. The merch is all over Dodgers Shop on Fanatics. Anything uh, Shoei Otani themed is what they're pushing because you don't give $700 million to anybody, and this is the reason why. He is the most marketable player in baseball, perhaps probably in just American sports in general. This is their moneymaker right now. Um, but, yeah, I, I fully understand it. Um Obviously, for some people that are Angel fans, they can kind of feel, I guess, wronged in a way with the amount of attention that Otani is getting and the amount of, I guess, disrespect they feel like their franchise is getting. Because I, I agree with you. I think he was happy to an extent to be on the Angels. You know, for most of the photos I've seen and videos, yeah. he did have a smile on his face. He was having fun. They were still doing dugout celebrations. And it seemed like he still had a good time with his teammates there. He had a good relationship with Mike Trout and others. But I think there is a little bit of change now because while the Dodgers, you know, it, the season's just now starting, he knows what's at stake. He knows the opportunities that have just opened up for him and where pretty much it, it's limitless now. You know, the roster that's been constructed this year and then what's potentially going to be constructed in the next like entirety of his contract, he knows that it's pretty much World Series or bus mode where with the Angels, their World Series would have just been making like a wild card round and you would have accepted that. But with Otani on the Dodgers now, he knows that it, it the, the goal is a lot more bigger. It, it, it's a World Series at the end of the day each and every year. So I think that excites him. And we saw it during the WBC how excited he was to finally compete. So um, I know he's excited to do that in Dodger Blue. Uh, for those of you who were wondering, it was less than 10 minutes into the show before the Angels got crapped on for the very first time. And whoever had a Canelo on their bingo card as being the first one to shit on the Angels, 
congratulations, you are the winner. Um, Alonzo, how much of this is because this is new? He's new to the team. Obviously, these guys are bonding. They're getting to know each other. They went golfing the other day. They're doing a lot of events here. Or is this also more about a, this is a dude who's now been in Major League Baseball for six years. And I, I've heard this narrative, and I wonder if this is true. He is finally embracing being the superstar that he is. I, you know, I, I saw that narrative kind of going around on the, the old Twitter machine. Um, I, I think there is some validity to it because I feel like in, in, in Anaheim, he was a little more sheltered. Right. And, and what I mean by that is not like that the, that the team wasn't like putting him in the forefront or like TV wasn't having him on high profile. I mean, let's not forget during his time there, how many times did the angels play on Sunday night baseball? So it was, you know, or even on Fox Saturday. So, so I don't think it's that. I think what it is though, is I think he's embracing the fact that he obviously he knows what his role is with this team. And there's all these other dudes that also are elite and winners. And their whole thing is they want to win. And so you don't really assemble the Avengers because that's more or less what the Dodgers did. They assembled the Avengers to try to go out and get a title. And I think everyone understanding that knows how that works. But also anyone that's ever been in a clubhouse knows there is a lot of egos in a clubhouse. Like It doesn't matter if it's the Pittsburgh Pirates or the Los Angeles Dodgers. There's always there's there's your, your clubhouse veteran. There's the guy. There's the ace. There's the quote unquote superstar. So I mean that that's always a thing. I think the Dodgers internally going about everything the way they are with a lot of team building and also putting that out is good to see because it's letting people know, hey, these guys are trying to to work together to collaborate to win for during this marathon. Because this isn't just going to be, you know, after these games in Korea, if they let's say they win the two of them, that's the chip. No, that's just the beginning. And so so it 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 makes it easier during the length of the season that if you all have a relationship, it makes everything easier because there's going to come a point where people are frustrated. There's going to come a point where people are mad about something that happened and you have to talk it out. You just have to. And at some point there's probably going to be a slump and you'd have to be able to kind of navigate through that. And the easiest way to navigate through it is finding a way to communicate. And if you can't communicate, then there is no team. So I think it's great to see it. And I also think it's great because it, it's, letting you see that element of humanity kind of come out because a lot of people just they're like going back to the Rendon thing. Hey, these guys are just here to make bags of money and play a game. And to a certain degree, that's true, but people don't see the preparation that goes into the bags of money and playing the game. And so this, this is kind of highlighting all that. And I think it's good overall for the Dodgers, but I, I also think it's good for the Shohei brand, if that makes sense. No, absolutely. Let's go back to the live and some of these comments here. Uh, Michael Carrillo, I did see that Hingen signed with the KBO, but is that real? Did he really sign for eight years? Wait, he signed uh, for eight years? Are, are you messing with me? Don't mislead me, Michael Carrillo. I know he signed with the Hanwha Eagles of the KBO. And it was and eight he, years. It was he eight, signed was for eight, eight years. years. 12.8. How old, Canelo, how old is Hingen? He's got to be in his middle 30s right damn wow that good for i didn't Hinchin, believe his man. comment either i had to look that up <laughs> hey i good for henshin i we love babe Ryu. go get your money babe Ryu. He's he's 36 wow so he's gonna be basically uh bartolo colon moyer <laughs> no he's bartolo colon man he's bartolo colon yeah it's yeah, yeah. home runs he's built like bartolo colon it's it's great. Uh, Michael Negrete, Juan, any Danny Duffy sighting. Well, so far, the nominee leading the pack for the Danny Duffy Award right now is the Anaheim Angels. So we'll see how that plays its uh, way out the rest of the night. For those of you who are new and don't know, the Danny Duffy Award is for the person, the team, or the noun that catches the most strays on this episode. So, uh Right now, the Angels are in the lead. So, uh, Denny Cortez brings up a very interesting uh, point here. This team has a real personality, and that's what makes it great. It does feel, I, I mean, look, the Oscar Hernandez shows up today, and all of a sudden, there seems to be like he's either this wonderful reality producer and he's out there putting out all this content. And it does already feel different. This clubhouse feels different, right, Canelo? Yeah, I mean, that 
I think that goes credit to a lot of things, and I think that's one of the reasons why I love the current coaching staff that's involved with the Dodgers right now. Like I know we mentioned uh, a couple episodes or a couple lives ago, just how involved Dave Roberts is with the players, you know, in their charities and their personal lives, in their, you know, making sure they know their roles in the clubhouse, knowing where they want to grow. You know, in his even his speech that he gave the entire team before, you know, they started their workouts and once every everybody reported at camp, I said, man, I I really want to run through a wall and I don't even play for the team right now. So I think. A lot of it has to do with him, but I also think a lot of it has to do, you know, you know, we do have guys that still show that they do care and we don't know everything they're doing behind the scenes, but you know, Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, you know, these veteran guys, Jason Hayward, and then even some of the young guys, they're taking their next step. They could be that bridge for other players as well. And then you do the off season that the Dodgers did where you're bringing in multiple players for multiple teams. I think at the end of the day, you know, we've, you know, I don't want to sound like a, a homer here, but I think we know that the Dodgers are just like that franchise that everybody should try to model, like your perfect franchise. So even though they don't win the World Series year after year, they still show a level of consistency of being a top performer in the regular season, which, you know, it's a long season. You have to have, you know, you're going to have your ups and downs, and it's really great to have, you know, someone to keep morale high. So, um, yeah, it looks really. It looks like they were all having fun today. I feel like they know what type of team they have, but you know, if they don't perform in October, we know what all their moves are going to be. We saw how it looked in, in Arizona in Game Three last a uh, couple months ago. So um, I think that's the biggest thing for them, uh, and that's their biggest hurdle, honestly. They wanted to hear uh, what, what what Canelo said. He said what he, he doesn't play for him right now, and and Cody shared with me the other day that. He plays in the men's adult uh, fast pitch league, so he may be like a mid-season pickup. You know, just yeah, saying. yeah. We don't know. We never know. We never know. Oh my god! Did you hit four home runs in one game? Are you the Al Bunty of your softball league? No, no, no. <laughs> Softball—that's <laughs> insulting. It's hard many, fast pitch baseball. I don't how play many, softball. Uh, how many grand slams, Cody? I mean, if I get one middle, middle. Like the the speed Otani's getting right now in his BP <laughs> sessions, I may I may be able to get. Hey, don't let the show base hear you. Don't let the yeah. show base hear you. So you're telling me you're gonna... getting you're getting batting velo at like one ten, like you're just going out there and just raking. Yeah, hey, I'm not Canelo. saying I, I want to use the stats on there, but you know we Fair. could probably pull one. Hey Fair. Canelo, are you singing? Are you swinging a wooden bat? Yeah, it is a wood bat league. A wood bat. Is only. it corked? Did you cork it? That was actually my first I, question. I sh cork? should go to my guy. I should say, hey, can you can you do some <laughs> modifications to the bat real quick? Uh, let's go to the comments. This one's for you, Canelo, uh, because you're in that neck of the woods. Uh, Adrian Rodriguez, what's up with Steven Strasburg, uh, Strasburg and the Nationals? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Canelo. I thought he was retired. Is Has something changed? I mean, the last I heard about it was actually when I was covering the team in D.C. That's when the news broke about some type of, you know, rift between the ownership front office and Steven Strasburg. You know, we obviously, if you watch baseball, you know the type of pitcher Strasburg is or the potential he had to be, but injuries pretty much derailed his entire career. And the injuries that sidelining him now, I think it's like neurological, like it's something that's going to follow him pretty much for the rest of his career where now he can't even pretty much rehab, right? So it looks like his career is over. But if you remember after the 2019 World Series, the Nationals – gave him a couple Brinks chucks, you know, of money <laughs> and they are on the hook for it. And that's the one thing about baseball compared to other sports where all that money's guaranteed. They have to pay him that money. Um, and they didn't, I think there's like a, a clause that some teams can do with contracts where, you know, it's insured that way if the player, you know, is, is injured and can't play, but the nationals didn't do that. So in terms, they're shit out of luck, but they want to get out of it some way, somehow, and that's causing a little bit of stir because they said, all right, if you retire, you don't get the money. You don't get the rest of the money, but that's not how it works. Players Association obviously won't allow that. Strasburg and his representatives obviously don't want that to happen, so that's a big thing right now. And the, It was rumored that the Nationals were looking to sell um, a couple months ago, but the owner just recently came out and said that they're not selling, um, so what that means with Strasburg in the future I think his playing days are over, but there's still the debacle. If the Nationals could clear off his salary, they have the money to go make some other moves, which is why, especially all the young guys they have there right now, if they can get Strasburg's deal somewhat off the books, 
they could be some guys uh, a player for either this year's free agency, honestly, just because we still have four big free agents still remaining. Uh, let's go back to the live. I, I love this comment. Michael Negrete, breaking news. Otani's going to WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you. This is where I wish that the fabulous Mr. Fuji was still alive. How great would it be if Shohei showed up at WrestleMania and Mr. Fuji was leading him down the aisle and Otani totally goes heel? I can only dream. Uh, let's go to Roy. Uh, Roy has a challenge for us. Who can get a Dodger to pick up uh, to pick Tupac's li "Live and Die in L.A." as their walk-up song in L.A. without Mexicans? Look, uh, I know someone, Dennis Gonzalez, he picked Max Muncy to do that. Um, I think it would have been awesome if Shohei picked that song, but CP, <laughs> CP, I think, has a better choice. After speaking Spanish today, Shohei's walk-up song is going to be La Chona. How, I mean, people would lose their mind at Dodger Stadium if Shohei's walk-up song was La Chona. Uh, Denny Cortez Canelo, he's going to hit an infield homer. I'm rooting for you in your men's league for you to hit an infield homer. You look, you don't, you run through that whole side. You, you run through it. Canelo, you get that, that infield home run. Even if you, have a cork bat, if you have a cork bat or not, it don't matter. All that matters. Cody is you got the infield gem. That's all. Yeah. The infield, the infield home run. You got to make it happen. Uh, Pablo, uh, welcome, my friend. Uh, Nando, Anthony Rendon hates Christmas. Absolutely. Uh, Michael Carrillo, we're going to get into uh, the spring training game because there is actually going to be a game tomorrow. Uh, let's see what else that we have here. Uh, well, that is true. Danny Cortez did say Peralta did have La Chona last year, so maybe there won't be any repeats to uh, La Chona. Um, so let's go. Let's get. Uh, let's bring in Babyface because Babyface is. He's in Camelback Ranch. He was at Camelback Ranch earlier today. He is currently right now in the Spaceballs Winnebago that he rented. Uh, Babyface, what do you? What can you report from spring training today? I mean, it was you know pretty much business. As, it was photo day. And we'll, probably, we'll get into that a little bit earlier, but it was pretty much business as usual. You know, the guys were there taking BP. Uh, there was bullpen. Walker Bueller was throwing the bullpen. Uh, Yamamoto threw a bullpen. Uh, Sheehan threw a bullpen. Um, but pretty, you know, pretty casual atmosphere. Um, the When Shohei does anything, as soon as he walks out, you hear it, right? You hear a roar of a crowd where, wherever wherever he's going. And then he went and he took a live BP. Uh, wasn't nothing like the first one. I think he saw like six pitches his first time and then one on his next at bat and he grounded out. So no home run today. But it was interesting because I was talking to a beat writer, uh, beat reporter prior to that, and he was saying about you know Shohei how he doesn't really talk to media, right? No, when he's when he's in the clubhouse, everybody ignores him because they know he's not talking. But today he went in there and he actually spoke to media. So this is his third time actually speaking to media when he's been at Camelback. So that's like a huge difference from anything that he ever did with the Angels. But you know he they opened it up for a couple minutes. First uh, English, then Japanese. I mean, just, I mean, typical clubhouse atmosphere. And, I mean, it's great to see. It's great to see Shohei being there and involved with, with his teammates. So we know that for a fact that last year he didn't talk to the media at all with the Angels? Well, I mean, from what I remember, every start, every pitching start, so it was like every six days or once a week, that's when he would he would talk. So that's why they said when when he comes to the Dodgers now, if he's not he's not pitching right. He's going to eventually have to speak sometime, right? Because he's just going to okay. be a design, designated hitter, right? But you know, like I said, he's been he's been pretty you know active speaking to the media. So and and in the clubhouse today. So that you know we'll, that remains to be seen if it's going to be something that's going to be the norm. You know, we'll see it at Dodger Stadium. Did my eyes deceive me, babyface, or did you take a picture with Manuel Margot today in the clubhouse? I talked to Manuel, Manuel Margot, so I'll, I'll post that that later. I talked to him, uh, Miguel Vargas, and Miguel Rojas. Um, and Miguel Rojas was telling me actually about you know about the about the team bonding. I asked him about I don't know if you heard that they do an initiation with with new players that they'll make them sit on the toilet if they don't give a good story, you know, prior to 
you know, when they're just talking, right? So they have to, the whole bus ride, they have to sit in the toilet. And I was asking them about that. And he was saying it's just been great. You know, the, the whole team bonding thing, they were out eating uh, chicken wings the other night. And Shohei was there. Miguel, uh, Miguel Rojas actually said he didn't eat any, he didn't eat any, but everybody was there having a good old time. So, I mean, we continue to see all this team bonding, right? From, from Dodger Fan Fest through now, this team is just bonding. So uh, all these, that's your trailer. All these interviews, the Rojas, Vargas, Marco, those will all be on the Bleed Lows podcast YouTube channel. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. I just got to edit them and I'll, and I'll put them up. Okay. So uh, there was something on here uh, and I believe it was Pablo. So uh, this is directed for Canelo. I think Pablo just joined the live for, for Canelo to be able to do this. So uh, before you do that, Canelo, I just want, <laughs> I, I want to give uh, Michael Negrete his due. Canelo is the Babe Ruth of fast pitch softball. I love that. I <laughs> I love that. Canelo. You should have never have shared that. I just want you. This is yeah, on no, you, I'm going to start posting my highlights. You know, I'm going to the batting cage <laughs> on Friday. You know what we're gonna start, We're going to start promoting Cody Snavely. You know, we're going to give you a minor league deal. We're going to start independent he, league. You know, he, we're going to uh, start it. He's adding it to the wall of compliments for sure, because he's just gonna run with it <laughs> and just hit hit the cage. Like he's he's gonna and I respect you for it, Cody. I respect you for it. Get that get that non roster invite. That's right. Hey, Sangrones, we will be posting the box score from Katie uh, from Canelo's uh, fast pitch <laughs> slow softball game. But anyways, uh, uh, Pablo had a he just chimed in because. He did not want to miss Canelo bashing the see-through uniform pants. So Canelo, that's the only I reason I'm here tonight. If I'm completely honest, that's the only reason I showed up. Go ahead and hit an inside the park home run. Give us go off, my friend, on these uniform pants. Honestly, I'm out of words at this point, just because it seems like every day there's just something worse and worse that comes out. Honestly, I'm glad that the fan reaction is extremely negative, just because even if you're not like the biggest Jersey guy, which we've heard that from a few people. And I understand that too, because I like, I buy jerseys for like, you know, like players that like I genuinely like, or that I know are going to be on the team for a while, but I'm not buying like every single team's Jersey. I'm not like collecting, like I don't have over 30 jerseys or anything like that. But when it comes to seeing them on the TV and like when they're like the media is posting photos of them and you just see how awful they look compared to last year and the years prior. And I really, honestly, I could take the Jersey changes in the Jersey itself. But when I saw the pants today, not only with the Dodgers, but for the Mariners, I think that's actually even more embarrassing because the baseball pants I wear aren't even see-through and, and I'm playing for some independent little leagues, you know, and this is major league baseball. And I think it's just a little weird because especially with the Dodgers who have such a, like a bright colorway with blue. You could see it under the pants. You could see it. If I wanted to see Otani's underwear, I could in in these pictures. And I just think that's really weird. And I just think I don't understand what Nike and Fanatics were thinking with like the quality control. Did they not have anybody test these pants before they released them? Pablo, you're absolutely right. MLB went uniform shopping at the Callejones. The Callejones por vida, my friend. Let me tell you, that's where I get my baseball hats, and I get them. Hey, the, the, the hats at the Callejones are clean and reasonably priced. Um, Alonso, I need you to take over, because if we're going to keep referencing, uh, so Mr. Seabed just said that uh, Cody scored four touchdowns in one game. Look, anytime you make a reference to Married with Children or Al Bundy, your comment is being read here, but if Cody's fast pitch softball game is going to become a thing now on this show, I'm all for it. I am not encouraging it. I'm not encouraging that, guys, but um, Alonzo, really, I, I know there are reports that the Players Union is getting involved in this. Like Contracts have already been signed. C can this even be fixed at oh. this point? not only can it be fixed it needs to be fixed because that's fucking embarrassing like it's someone said it on here it looks like someone went to team you and bought pants for everybody and that's and that's how they got them they're not like bro that that's embarrassing like i listen don't get me wrong i i, I know that 
no one here is going to buy baseball pants except the Babe Ruth of the Delaware Softball League, Cody Snavely. But I would not buy those pants because my legs are brown. Like, you're just going to see this off-white brown color through these see-through pants. Like, it doesn't make sense. And so, so for me, I can't even imagine how the players feel. Like, put because the players see that right away. And they're just like, what the fuck is this? Like, why, why, like, what? So, if you're going to have... If you're if Nike's involved, the fact that they still haven't fixed this yet is kind of shocking to me because it's Nike. Like they're the biggest sporting brand on the planet, right? Like everyone knows who Nike is. And so the fact that they haven't fixed, th- I mean, I hope they do, but they need to because aside from my favorite thing I've seen about all of this is uh, I don't remember who it was. I think it was a player with the Mariners posted a picture of their jersey and someone sent that screenshot of that jersey to Fanatics telling them that their jersey order was fucked up and they didn't even know that that was a player jersey that had already been previously posted so they responded with hey we're gonna get that fixed for you how this isn't even my jersey. like what are we doing like what are we doing all right guys seriously i am not gonna stand for slander of cody of canelo's <laughs> fast pitch softball you know championship just an option is danny duffy the new canelo come on now sir my I rehab not- <laughs> is going well and wait just so we're not knocking me down it's baseball i would never play softball guys wow Look, i'm still okay. young i'm still young Wait, I so what the fuck does that mean? Ages? Like, what does that mean? Never I have shared that story, bro. No. You can take baby face. Yeah. Baby face on We're running with it all like summer. This. All Come summer. You. Baby face needs to send me a bleed lows patch. I'm putting it on the jersey and bro. we're gonna ru- rep it. Bro, if I don't see you hitting in a cage with like a pitching machine, just like flexing on everybody, I'm gonna have a fucking problem with you. <laughs> Hey, Canelo, are you the guy in the dugout that after you guys lose 10 to nothing, you sit there and go, I don't know. I just crack a beer I, That's I, I went four for four. You fucking losers are the ones that lost the game. I went four for four. I hit a grand slam. What did you do today? That's that's Cody. In high school, I was the dugout comedian. I was the role player during my high school playing days. So. <laughs> can, I, can I also add my favorite thing that's happening right now is all the shade that Anthony Rendon is getting. Anthony Rendon <laughs> hates Christmas. That's probably the best thing I have heard today. That's, that's incredible. Uh, yeah, uh, there, we have a new leader for the Danny Duffy Award today, and that is Anthony Rendon. Uh, <laughs> Babyface, look, you were there. Uh, how many uh, – did you see any cucumbers uh, while you were on the field? I mean, Like, was it noticeable – or were they wearing different pants out there in practice? I didn't really notice the pants that much. Um, I did see, I did notice that Freddie Freeman was getting his pants altered when I walked into the clubhouse. So he was getting worked on for his pants, kind of getting him to, to where he likes them. But I didn't really pay attention too much to the pants while I was out there. Uh, you can- <laughs> <laughs> Canelo, you saw the picture with the belt, right? Yeah. yeah, was that real? Was that real? So I don't know what what it is because I don't know if the MLB really keeps tabs on the players' belts anymore. Because, I, like, I look at some teams, you know, they each have like a different variation of the belt. You know, some some teams have like customization on, like, even Yamamoto has some Japanese scripture on his belt. Bryce Harper has his own thing in Philly where his belt is different than the other team. So either these players are getting fined for it, or if whatever belt Otani was wearing was like the team official belt looked like the Kansas city Royals blue compared to Dodgers blue. So I don't know what's going on. Just the whole photo day thing, you know, it it was just, I was like, yeah, looking at the players, you know, look how happy they are. And then I'd be like, (laughs) like, I would just look down and just be confused. So I, I don't know what's going on, but, you know, to, to even answer the point you made earlier that Alonzo even said, you know, can they even make a change? Yeah, they can. And the fact that the other day, I think the Athletic put out an article saying that the Players Union is pretty much getting involved with it just because the amount of complaints, not with the aesthetic purposes and stuff, but like the stuff they're taking away from the players, the way it's making the players feel like at the end of the day, that's what it's tailored to. So could the player see a change in 2024? Yes. In terms of retail for what is going to be on the market for people to buy, I don't think that's going to change until 2025. But other than that, Nike has the deal, I think, for the foreseeable future. And Rob Manfred didn't really care about the comments when he was asked about it. He said, you know, 
people just need to be welcome to change. That's basically the gist of his statement there. So it's it's going to be a topic that's going to keep going on and on until something changes. That's which, code for the check has cashed. We are not doing anything <laughs> right now. I I would like to applaud Jorge Larios uh, because oh uh, dude that's incredible <laughs> that was uh, Jorge Larios that my friend you went to the top of the leaderboard on this one and that is uh, Jorge Larios with Anthony Rendon no Mosna in su iglesia that my friend was uh, was very good um, Adrian Rodriguez is Mr Fuji still alive unfortunately Mr Fuji is no longer alive and that's why it makes me so sad because it would have been so great if Shohei showed up at WrestleMania with Mr. Fuji leading him down the aisle. How um, mad would you be, though, if Shohei did the Hogan thing where he's the good guy, but he fucks up all the program? That is the worst thing he could do. If if Shohei showed up to WrestleMania wearing the yellow and red, uh, that it would just break my heart. It, it would literally just break my heart. Uh, Michael Negrete Canelo is on the injury list sitting next to Danny Duffy. So there we go, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love this. Um, Close second, by the way, to comment of the night. Uh, Anthony Rendon <laughs> sold me fentanyl behind a McDonald's. <laughs> and we just saw the balloons again. A lot I don't know why that happens. happens. I have were no you, idea why that happens. Were I you pressed... patting yourself on the back for that yes. comment? <laughs> yeah. Unlike Cody, I can actually move my shoulders. So I was patting myself on the back. But uh, no, I, dude, I don't know why that happens. It happened on a Zoom call today when, that I was taking for work. And someone was like, oh, were you excited about what you just said? No, I don't know why that happens. Uh, Babyface, so it, has it been confirmed? I know we know that Gavin Stone and Michael Grove are going to be pitching in the game tomorrow against the show pods. But I believe Michael Carrillo put in the chat that it looks like Gavin Stone is getting the start. Has that been confirmed? Yes, Doc mentioned that in his morning press this morning. So let me ask you guys this. The fact that we had the Walker Bueller news and that he's not going to be pitching in any Cactus League games, I'm starting to think, I think it's a very slim chance because I think Gavin Stone is still going to start in the minor leagues this season. But considering that Walker Bueller is not going to get any action, if Gavin Stone has a good spring, do they have to look at him again and give him serious consideration of putting him on the starting on the 40, uh, not the 40 man on the start opening day roster? Cause I don't see them putting him on the roster when they go to Korea. Alonzo. I mean, if, if he has a great spring and shows improvement on the things that they obviously know he needs to improve at the major league level, I don't see why not. Cause if you're not going to have Walker Beeler for a while, and you're not going to have Clayton Kershaw for a while. You need all the depth that you can get. And especially so you don't have to kind of throw the burden on all, all these other guys, right? Like, yeah, Bobby Ice is a young guy, but he's still learning the major league level. Yamamoto is going to have the biggest curve, uh, no pun intended, to figure out kind of how <clears throat> how to pitch to these guys at this level. There is going to be an adjustment period. So why would you not want to have that in your arsenal when it takes a lot of the kind of pressure off these other guys that are trying to come back and let them hey do your thing go rehab go do what you got to do we got it and we'll hold it down it's not a bad thing either because he's a young guy you know i'm sure they'll have him on a little bit of an innings count but still he's still learning and if he has an elite spring i don't see why not i don't look at it as a bad thing at all uh canelo i i mean the fact that as michael carrillo says bueller may not come back until may um I mean, how realistic of a chance does Gavin Stone have to make this roster? Yeah, I think he has to definitely be given a look. Um, if you had to ask me personally, even if he does have a decent spring, I really do think he will still start the season in the minors just because they're going to look to give him at least a start every fifth day. And with when he's on the Dodgers, even with Bueller not on the rotation or on the roster, that's not a given for him. Um, and... It still seems like unless he did a lot of offseason work, which by all means he probably did, the Dodgers probably had some stuff for him to work on. And I even talked about it last year, the stuff that worked with him to get him through the minor leagues so fast just didn't translate to, to the major leagues. You know, his changeup, which was supposed to be a nasty pitch, just didn't translate well. You know, the hitters hit it hard. His fastball was even worse. It was just a pitch that I think most, I think, in his stint, like everybody had like a 900 OPS against his fastball. And that just is something that you can't really have. And he doesn't really have necessarily have a third pitch to get out of at bats, which 
it's something that you need to be a starting pitcher in baseball and major league baseball. So um, I do think there is a slight chance he could make the roster, but I really think the Dodgers is going to go th- with the familiar hand as long as he's healthy. And that is probably Michael Grove. If I had to guess um, just because, you know, we've seen what he can do. We've seen some of the highs. We've seen some of the lows, but at the beginning part of the season, especially for that Korea series, I don't really think they're going to be, looking too much into the depth spot of it. Um, They also could just be making sure that they don't have to waste any of um, Gavin Stone's options. You know, if he still has those minor league options, they want to use those throughout the majority of the, you know, middle to second half of the season, especially when they start looking at, you know, they may not come out and say innings limit, innings limit, innings limit for certain guys, but you know, Tyler Glass now has injury history. We don't know how Yamamoto is going to translate to the league. And then you even got Walker Bueller and Clint Kershaw who are supposed to be coming back in, you know, May and then August for Kershaw potentially. So um, they're going to need these guys. They're going to need their options. It's going to be, they won't have a six man rotation because they've already come out and pretty much said that, but they're going to be going through these guys from the minors and the majors. They're going to be making their trips kind of like journeymen right now. And they've, I don't think as a Dodger fan, you should be surprised. They've been doing it probably for like four or five years now. And that's just kind of what I'm used to. And that's kind of what I expect. Uh, Let's go back to the chat here. Michael Negrete, Canelo, with the kidding of you, you do an excellent job. Canelo just got initiated to what it's like to do a show with a bunch of Mexicans. This look, (laughs) there's a reason why we call this the carne asada. And all of you guys on the live, you guys know how it is. When you're at a carne asada, you're drinking Somebody's always getting roasted, but it's done with love. And I will say this. We can crap on Canelo. We can give him a hard time. But anybody else comes in here, other shows, they want to talk shit, then they got to deal with us. Right, guys? Right, Sangronis? Nobody can fuck with Canelo except us. So, yes, he is a great sport, and he takes it in stride. Yeah, so Uh, fuck you, Cody. (laughs) (laughs) So there was there was a comment here that I think is very interesting because I've seen this narrative and I wonder if you've seen it, Alonzo. It is now we are getting close to the end of February, people. And Blake Snell still hasn't signed. Bellinger hasn't signed. And I know it's not my money. And I know it's like, hey, if the Dodgers have spent this much money already. But these theories that are being spelled out here where it's just like, well, Let's give Snell a one-year deal, or let's give Bellinger a one-year deal. Alonzo, how soon, or is there panic in these dudes? I I mean, I would have to think, and I get it because the Dodgers and the show pods started their spring training early. Other teams are just starting to, to report. So in particular with pitchers, I still think Blake Snell has time to be ready for opening day. And there is still that report out there that the Yankees are showing interest in Blake Snell. But the the longer this goes, is there a possibility that the Dodgers could do something crazy like this? Go along in this hypothetical, which I know is total bullshit and won't happen because these guys want to get their money. But is is it really that outlandish to think the Dodgers could go to Blake Snell and say, hey, dude, come play with us for a year? I think Cody will agree with me. I don't think it would make sense to go out and get Blake Snell now just because you kind of have an idea of what you have. Does that make sense? You have an idea of what your clubhouse is, and if you add kind of a piece to the fire a little late, uh, it it could throw a little bit of gelling off. I mean, I will say this. I think think Tom Ricketts more or less – came out and told Scott Boris, hey, you're gonna you gotta learn Chinese, buddy, because we're not gonna fucking sign your guys. We're not gonna give them this amount of money. Like it, it, it clearly there is a disconnect in money, right? Like with Cody Bellinger even. I think they're a hundred million dollars apart if I'm completely honest with you, because they haven't even talked about even trying to meet in the middle. But the but the Blake Snell thing is interesting because I think there the, it would make a lot of sense because of familiarity, right? He was in the division last year. You know, he, he kind of saw what the thing is. He, he knows kind of what the Dodgers are, you know, when you see him every day aside from the World Series uh, or, or throughout the season, I should say. So I think from from what the Dodgers are trying to do is, is kind of what I'm alluding to with this, where I think Cody would may agree with me. I mean, he said crazier shit too, though. Um, 
that long term it doesn't make sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, in a bubble, would the Dodgers like to have Snell for only one year of commitment? Yes. But like Michael Carrillo put in, you know, the comments is that they're over that luxury tax. So any deal they, they sign will be almost worth double on the penalties towards them. So you get Snell for 30 million for one year. Well, guess what? It's like a $60 million tax hit. And the Dodgers are just not in a position while they may have money to just burn. I think the roster that they have right now is pretty much set. Um, And it's really interesting to see what these guys are going to get, because I think right now, any idea of a multi-year, like a a long multi-year deal is done. I, I would say Bellinger probably maxes out at three or four years. Snell is probably in the same predicament. Snell at least probably could benefit of signing like a three-year deal with an opt-out, which is what a lot of people are suggesting. But, you know, the whole thing about Scott Boris is that he's trying to get you the most money and the most, you know, like long-term out of the commitment. That way there's no opt-outs, no wiggle room. That's your team. That's where you're playing. So, but Blake Snell never really struck me as that guy. I could see him just taking a four-year deal and then just calling it a quits, especially whatever team he goes to. Um, but it would be interesting. I would take Snell. I would take Bellinger for a one-year deal, especially after the season he had last year. But like I said, we're we're in a bubble right now. I think this Dodgers team is pretty much set. This is what we're going to be seeing opening day. Any other changes, that's going to be on the trade deadline. Canelo, how surprised are you that these guys have gone this deep into the offseason? Well, I don't even know if you can call it the offseason anymore. Uh and not and not signed. I'm a, a little surprised that it hasn't happened yet. And I I'm I'm a lot more surprised about Bellinger because it seems like I haven't heard a single team except for the Cubs and maybe the Blue Jays because he posted his girlfriend or wife posted something on her Snapchat story of them in Toronto. And other than that, it's crickets. Um obviously we've heard some of the Cubs players say they they won him back. There's been rumors that saying he prefers to like, you know, go back there, but he's, if he really wanted to be there and the Cubs really wanted him, they would have at least met somewhere in the middle and it would have happened by now. So um, Blake Snell, I'm probably going to lean towards probably the Yankees is where he'll end up. Cause it seems like they're the only team that's seriously interested. But on the other hand, I'm not surprised because with Snell and Bellinger, they have had such peaks and valleys throughout their career And teams look at that. You know, when you're looking at free agency, you're looking at like a good three-year sample size. And for Bellinger, we know what those other two years were before last year. And for Snell, if he's not hitting 180 innings pitched, he has been pretty bad. Um, So these teams are looking at that. They're not going to shell out that much money for this type of commitment if you're having that much up and down success. Um, So I'm surprised. I really think it's just teams just saying, okay, we just won't sign that player. We can go get this guy instead, or we would rather roll with this guy just because he's cheaper and gives us similar production. I don't know what what the players are taking right now. I mean, I I would have to think that, wouldn't you as a player kind of be mad at Scott Boris at this point, especially with how late they are? It is the season now. Well, so so what I was going to say is the thing that if, if he were my agent, Tom Ricketts went on record and said, uh, on Cody, uh, quote, we're just waiting for whenever he and his agent are going to engage. And it could be any time now, or it could be a few weeks. We'll just see where it goes. But there have been some discussions, but not a negotiation yet. So at the end of the day, all, I mean, I get what Scott Boris is trying to do. He's trying to do the big league, you know, super agent thing. It just doesn't always work, right? And I'm sure for Cody, they're asking for a seven, eight year deal in that 280 range. Let's just be real here. That's not that's not what Cody's valuation is. I think that's fair to say, right, Cody? Yeah, I, I would say based off of, you know, if you look at 2019, like 2017 to 2019, you saw that he was on that path. And then, you know, 2020, 2021, and 2022 happened where the production just went down and down and down, hitting an all-time low where he'd even finish out his, you know, his six years in, in Dodger Blue. They ended up non-tendering him. And he does have a little bit of a resurgence with the Cubs, but me and Juan have talked about this. A lot of the, you know, the inside numbers kind of projected that maybe he shouldn't have had that big of a a success of a season, especially on the hitting side. If you look at his baseball savant page, you know, there are a little bit of reds mixed in there, which is really good where he's in the high percentiles, but 
There's also a lot of blues that are very concerning, especially for long-term success. Like you can have a really good singular season, but if those, you know, measurements still transition throughout the next couple of years, you're going to see, you know, a decline in all of your stats across the board. So I understand why teams aren't willing to make that commitment with Snell. I think he is a little bit better of a case just because he's a two time Cy Young winner, one in the AL, one in the NL, and he's the recent National League Cy Young winner. So I can see why he's still asking for a, a lot of money, probably up front. And then Jordan Montgomery, also, who we haven't really mentioned, he just came off winning the World Series and was a huge part for that Texas Rangers team. So um, it, it, it's a lot of stuff going on right now. I would hope that these guys sign within the next week, but I've been saying that last week, the week <laughs> before that. And, and it's just, you know, you it's it continues going down that rabbit hole. So I honestly don't know when they're going to sign. I'm really just focusing on the Dodgers right now. You know, they're not on our team. It's no longer free agency for us. I'm just focusing on the season ahead and none of these guys have any impact on me whatsoever unless or, they sign in the division that's the what? only thing which they probably won't i was gonna say they probably won't but the other thing too though is i mean this their agent just so we're clear is a guy that's on record also saying referring to the deadline that deadlines are death lines to the players it's a death of their right and it's an artificial reason to not get your value that at the end of the day if your valuation is your value you're gonna get it so all that they're holding out for here is for years and they're not gonna get it so it's a good old stalemate that doesn't make sense to me if I'm completely honest, because the Cubs need Cody. Cody needs the Cubs, not our Cody, because our Cody still hasn't gotten his roster invite. But it, it's one of those where, where it, truthfully, if I was if I was the player, I would be frustrated because uh, obviously the agent's gonna follow what you tell him to do, but Boris doesn't want to wiggle in any way because then it, it it looks weak. Well, if your player, if your your client doesn't get a contract, then what's the point? Yeah, and I'm actually agreeing with some of the comments in here. And Carlos brought it up in our last episode, which was on YouTube. Um, I I would like to see Bellinger and Snell go to the Angels. I think what's a way to win back a lot of your fans? Go to Anaheim. Yeah. Go to a team that has money to spend. Artie Moreno has spent money in the past. I think it's a lot smarter to give Bellinger and Snell money compared to the other guys he's given money to before, and they would fit a lot of their needs there. You know. Left-handed power bat to replace Shohei Otani. Insert Cody Bellinger. Starting pitcher who they desperately needed. Blake Snell. You Jordan Montgomery. Me. Those guys yeah. are right there. And the Angels, they're not a small market team. They have money to spend. They didn't spend $700 million on Shohei Otani, so they could use that somewhere else. You're making too much sense, Cody. You're making way too much sense. Well, yeah, fuck the Angels. I mean, that's my new thing right now. Rogers got the Padres. I have the Angels. You know, everyone's just got to start picking their own new teams to, to talk crap on. Uh, Canelo, in all seriousness, do you set individual goals for inside the park home runs for this season? And if so, do you have a number? Honestly, if it's hit on the infield, I may be jogging. It, it'll have to take a lot of errors. You know, hey, well, hold on. I, I, may be, where, I may be young, but I don't like running out. You know, where, I'm not where? a bunter. If it's in the infield, it's an out. So what you're so, saying is you're going to get Jonathan Papelbon by one of your teammates. He may choke around. me. I don't I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. How how far into the infield are are we talking here? So, I mean, a, a little nibbler in front of the catcher. I mean, what am I running on that for? Back to the pitcher. I mean, unless he launches it into the bleachers, I mean, I'm out by a mile. But, you know, obviously if I'm hit to the shortstop, I'm hoping Hanley Ramirez is playing over there or something. Maybe I got a chance. But, you know. I, I mean. I'm here for the uh, Canelo A-Rod karate chop when he gets to first base. I, I need that kind of energy. I think you give it there. Uh, let's go to the chat. Uh, Pablo, Anthony Rendon likes his tacos with flour tortillas. That is a man who knows this show. And what I love is David wants a taco, follows up with Pablo is on it. We don't partake in the tortilla of the oppressor unless it's, unless it's in burrito form. There we go. David wants a taco. That's what it's all about. Uh, Babyface, let's get you in here real quick uh, to give us some more spring training updates. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Babyface is coming to us live from Camelback Ranch. He is inside the Winnebago from Spaceballs. Babyface, uh, the worst cape secret is that Yamamoto and Glass now are more than likely going to be pitching in the Korea series. I know a lot of people were making a big deal of the fact that glass now was throwing like what 98 99 uh down there in spring training 
how did you see glass now how is his hair uh is he wearing a hat or does he have any other protective device for the hair and uh yamamoto how has yamamoto looked Actually, I didn't see glass now today, so I'm gonna, I'll, be, I'll be on the lookout tomorrow and see how, how the hair is flowing tomorrow. Uh, but I did see Yamamoto. He was throwing a, a bullpen, and he is doing a live BP tomorrow. That's what I at least saw in the uh, in the notes that were in the clubhouse. So it looks like he's on track. I mean, Doc said uh, those two guys are on track to start in Korea. Uh, safe bet, right? Um, so it's going to be, you know, Pretty exciting to see those two guys start in Korea in Korea uh, for the Dodgers in you know what now a couple weeks now, so I did and I'm gonna post this as well. I I got a uh, like a bird's eye view of Yamamoto. I went behind uh, where he was who was pitching, so it's like you're right in the batter's box and you see the pitch coming. I think it was like a curveball or something. So I'm gonna post that. I think it looks pretty cool just to see kind of what Yamamoto looks like from in the batter's box. You know, Canelo would uh, appreciate that. Did you see him throwing a javelin? I did not, but he, he did walk into the clubhouse with his like three or four uh, javelins. I was surprised that the, the end of them, I was expecting kind of like a, you know, how javelins are, right? Kind of the, the pointy tips or whatever. But I, I always thought like, you can't be throwing that, right? Because somebody could get hurt, right? So they're, they have like a, I guess like a ball on the end. So, you know, safe for safe tossing. But yeah, he walked in with like three or four of them, put them in his, in his locker and ready for tomorrow so would you take yamamoto or would you take lamar from revenge of the third the nerds on javelin throwing and th those are for the people that, that, in the chat. That, that is a revenge of the nerds reference for those of you in the chat now, uh, wasn't, wasn't lamar's like especially like you know modified had all these like, yeah he, uh, had, he had he had he had like all the computer stuff in there right so i don't know that, exactly. that, that, that that's a toss-up I like that Worms. Cody just like what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> worms are worms are may, uh, tricked javelin. it out. Yeah, worms are worms are tricked out the the javelin and CB right there. That's right. That one was for CB in the chat. I think CB was the only one that got that reference of of Lamar from Revenge of the Nerds. Um, do you uh, did you see Blake Trinan, uh, Babyface? I did not see him today as well. He wasn't in the clubhouse when we were in there, and I didn't see him on the field. Okay. Uh, Canelo, have you heard these reports? Do you know if this is true or not? They're saying Bueller is throwing 90 miles per hour. Is that true? I have seen them. I believe it was Roberts who initially said that he was hitting 92 miles per hour, which I think it was Bueller, I think himself said on a podcast a couple of weeks ago saying he was throwing 94 miles per hour. So I thought, oh, that sounds encouraging. But Hearing 92 kind of did hit me in the face because I wouldn't expect Roberts to like lie about the numbers that he's seeing. Um, it, it is a little concerning for me just because, you know, they we saw them try to get him built up. Maybe that was a little more of Bueller trying to get back at the end of last season. They ended up shutting him down. And now, you know, he's not coming back until May. When in May? Probably towards the end, I would say maybe closer to June than, than you know, in the beginning of May. And, I don't know what to expect really, you know, because not many players have two Tommy John surgeries and come back, you know, a hundred percent. I mentioned before, the only one I can really think off the top of my head is Nathan Avaldi, and he still had a decent career made out of it, you know, helping the Rangers win last year, helping the Red Sox win in 2018. So Bueller's going to have to change some things. Um, I mentioned before Dylan Hernandez wrote an, an article with, for the LA times, you know, basically saying that Bueller had to kind of gain some extra weight and muscle to, you know, put on his arm. And he went from gaining, he went from a slim 185 to, I think around two, 208 or 210 pounds, which is a, a, it's a huge spike for someone who has, is we've seen what Bueller looks like, you know, he's extremely skinny and thin and uses that to his advantage. And he kind of has to adapt and grow as he gets older. Like, He's not as young as a lot of people like to think. He's in his 30s now. You know, he did play all his years at, at Vanderbilt for college, so he came in the league a little bit later. Um, so, And he's about to be a free agent, so the Dodgers are going to take their time with him. Bueller himself is probably going to take his time as well because another injury for him could end his career and cost him a contract for this upcoming season. And it's going to be something interesting to watch. 
if he is throwing 92, 93 miles per hour, I still think he can get by with that just because of the pitches and his movement. But we just have to wait and see until he starts facing live batters, which we don't know when we're going to see that. We know we're not going to see it this spring. Are we going to be seeing it in his rehab starts when he's getting ready? Are we going to be seeing it in May when he makes his debut in the regular season? We don't know, but honestly, he's the Dodgers' fourth starter right now, so I think that's good for him. I think that's good for the team. Uh, Alonzo, how concerned are you about the Walker Bueller? Because, I mean, was he not? He was supposed to come back at the end of last year, and we all thought, you know, that that was rushing it. That was optimistic. Now they told us right from the beginning that he wasn't going to be ready at the beginning of the year. I don't know if anybody saw him not pitching though in cactus leagues games. I think that's, what's throwing people off. Am I wrong there? Um, no, I mean, I'm not surprised he's not throwing in any cactus league games because I mean, as soon as like, I think it was like a month ago, the Dodgers released a video of him throwing a bullpen at Dodger stadium. And he looked fine then, you know, it didn't seem like he was throwing, like at max capacity for lack of a better term, you know, he's not trying to go out there. I mean, he definitely looks, he, he definitely looks like he threw some weight on, which is good because he wasn't just relying on, on his back and hips to just get that velocity. But I think that's a good thing, but I do think keeping him out of that gameplay is good because then once you kind of get those competitive juices going, then that's when you want to push yourself. And I do that to myself. I mean, that's how I hurt my shoulder the second time. And so, so being able to kind of control that and limit it, I think is, is a, is a win. Even the velocity at 92, I think is good because I think he, like, I know he would hit a hundred and he sat around like 98, 97, but 92, given that he's had that Tommy John, was recovering. They shut him down and he was just building up strength. I think is kind of where you want to be, especially for a guy that is potentially going to come back in summer sometime. Um, and so, so him building up to where he needs to be slowly, I don't think is a bad thing. I don't think it's a, uh, if, if anything, it's a good thing that we're seeing videos of him throwing. And it's a good thing that we're getting these stats out because then that lets everyone kind of know, Hey, he's on pace to do kind of, to, to not only throw this year, but with our program that we kind of had in place. So I think it's a win all around, um, and it doesn't have me worried. Uh, Babyface, I think some people in the chat are concerned. They want you to make sure that the shitter is not full. Uh, so I, you might want to go ahead and check that on the on the Winnebago that you rented. There's not so much. There's not much information I can give out. I am in a safe spot in Arizona in a Winnebago, and. Uh, you know, but getting back to uh, Bueller, he did drop a couple f bombs during his bullpen, so I think you know, he's pretty much on track. Did you see Muncie, as Michael Negrete said? Because the report is he's in great shape. Uh, if I had a, I mean, I feel like that's a storyline that anybody can put out every spring training where someone shows up in the greatest shape of their life. But is Max Muncie? Uh, did you get a chance to look at his physique? Yeah, I, he walked into the clubhouse. He does look a lot, you know, maybe thinner, right? And he looks good. I mean, he looks good. He, he looks good on the field. So the hope is that it's going to improve his, his defense, his versatility, you know, if he's lost a little bit of weight. So, but yeah, right now he's looking really good. He, I, I believe he is in the best shape of his life. Pablo, I got you, my friend. I got you. Uh, let's uh, wrap up the show. It was photo day today. Uh, I don't know if you guys have been able to see some of these uh, portraits that they went ahead and put out. I don't know if any of you are impressed with any of them, but I, I love that Yamamoto and Otani, they have them just looking off camera. Uh, Babyface, did you see them taking these pictures? No. So actually, so usually uh, meetup time is like 7.45 in the morning, 8 in the morning. So today was actually push, pushed back to 9.30 because they had photo day. So that was all done before, you know, media was let in. All right. Well, look, guys, tomorrow we actually have baseball being played. So we're going to be able to talk about other things. Uh, I think primarily probably we're going to talk about pitching in terms of everyday players. Cody, who do you expect to play tomorrow? I mean, it could p probably be a mix. I know pitchers in spring training, it's always up in the air because some guys don't like to throw, sometimes don't want to throw as much. 
Some guys want to take things a little bit slower. But for position player wise, you know, we could see a good mix of starters and then they get their chance out there. But I, what I really enjoy about spring training is that we get to see a lot of the names that we're not going to see for the next couple of years. I want to see Cartaya get in there. I want to see a mix of those three catchers that the Dodgers have. I want to see some other guys. I want to see some of the younger pitchers too, because either they're auditioning for the trade deadline or they're auditioning for, you know, the future to be on this team. So that's what I get excited for spring training. Cause we're seeing a lot of different names. Um, I am really interested to see how Gavin stone bounces back because um, I think he really does need to get off to the right track just to get things shaped up in his head. Um, Cause that the mental side of baseball is huge. And I know he wasn't happy with those results last year, especially after the past two years, he pretty much steamrolled through the minor leagues and then kind of got a reality shock in his MLB debut and, and his uh, time in the MLB last year. So um, it's great that he's kicking off the, you know, the spring training games in the Cactus League. So if the Padres win tomorrow, is there going to be a parade in the Gas Lab District tomorrow night? Are, are you going to cover it? Are you going to be there yeah. live? Uh, well, I mean, I don't think I can make the drive from Arizona to San Diego tomorrow, but I mean, is that what's going to happen? It might, we might, or they might wait until Korea if they win the series in Korea. Uh, before I go to Alonso, Michael Carrillo, uh, when he says, "Wouldn't he have seen how? F- wouldn't we have seen how fit Muncie is at the Polar Plunge?" Uh, I was at the Polar Plunge. Max Muncie was there. Max Muncie did not participate in the Polar Plunge, but he was there to support Chris Taylor. Uh, I saw Muncie in regular street clothes. Uh, in the holding area, there was a restaurant around the corner where the players went after the polar plunge. Um, he looked, honestly, to tell you the truth, he looked the same to me. Uh, but Muncie did not participate in the polar plunge. So we, we did not get to see that physique. Uh, Alonzo, what are you looking forward to uh, either tomorrow or this week, uh, this weekend? Uh, this weekend, I'm looking forward to seeing some of like like Cody was saying, some of the guys, the names that you hear, like the Andy Pachas of the world, the uh, you know the like Matt Gage who they just acquired, like some of these guys to kind of see him, you know, in in this environment, but also to see what their stuff is, right? Um, Diego Cartaya is another intriguing name because obviously he, you know, there's been a lot of chatter about how he kind of fell off a little bit. So curious to see how how that goes but you know the young guys i mean the young guys are always going to get a shot especially this early in spring and so looking forward to seeing all that but also i mean there's you're gonna see the the likes of like you know for an inning or two t oscar hernandez like you're gonna see what you know what he brings to the table you're you're obviously gonna see and how good a shape max muncie's in the guy that i'm really interested to see at some point in the spring is james paxton because there's a lot of talk about the injury. There's a lot of talk about, you know, this is kind of why this contract changed up. And and I'm really curious to see what what he's kind of working through and what he's working on. Because he already had great stuff, but you get him in the lab out there with Pryor. And I think that changes up a few things. So I'm, I'm really curious to see that. Um, and then old friends, right? The Joe Kellys of the world. You'll see him throw, you know, a, a spitball any year there. You know, the the Bobby Millers of the world. You'll see him, you know, just get get the reps in and, and the things that they need to do to get ready for the season. So so I'm 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 really curious to see all that. And then and I will say, you Darvish said something a couple days ago that basically says, and going into the regular season because none of this shit counts, but going into the regular season, uh, that the Dodgers. You know, that basically they need to play to the standards of the Dodgers. So that's for sure in their heads, right? So in the regular season, I am curious to see that because if they manage to get a sweep from the Dodgers, knock on wood, then there might be a parade, but we'll see. There you have it. Uh, Mr. Seabed, I want to see Juan in the new see-through unis and parade it on the Carne Asada. Let me tell you something, Mr. Seabed. All my clothes are see-through. If you ask my wife and my daughter, they see my plumbers crack more than anybody. So they, I'm sure, uh, would l- will will say to you that I already have see-through uh, unis. Uh, Babyface, what are you looking for? Since uh, you're going to be there the whole rest of the week, right, Babyface? Through the end of the week, this week, yeah. So what are you looking forward to? What do you expect to see? Yeah, I mean, for tomorrow, I mean, I think, yeah, we might see some of those. I might see some regulars, maybe Muncie, Betts, Outman, some of those guys, maybe Margot, some of those guys that, that will get in. And just honestly, just just let those guys get their work done, right? That's all you want to see. 
get into games, get their work done, a couple innings, and they're out, and that everybody comes out you know, not hurt and no injuries and nothing to report like that. And that's pretty much it. That's kind of what I'm looking forward to seeing tomorrow. And then Friday, they'll be at Camelback playing again there. So same thing. Just go in, get your work done, and out. Okay. Well, uh, and remember, guys, make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel because Babyface is at spring training. So everything he's covering is going to be all on the YouTube channel. Check him out as he interviews the players. Uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And just to recap this episode as we end things here, guys, uh, it looks like the Danny Duffy Award goes to Anthony Rendon. Congratulations, Anthony. You have won an award before the season has started. And then the other thing that we learned is we are going to be getting updates from Canelo's Fast Pitch Softball League. And we're hoping that he has a huge season, perhaps MVP, dare I say it, uh, dare I say it, but I know you're a team player, so you're going to do whatever your team needs to win the game, right? Yep. What position are you playing, actually, Canelo? I am a catcher, catcher at heart, so I've been doing that for my entire time playing. Alonzo is getting a highlight video this Friday. Be on the Sick. lookout for that. Bro, He's I'm getting so it. It's, it's going to be for him. So. I'm so stoked. <laughs> Canelo, do you wear the just the mask, or do you wear the, the hockey mask? Um, I transition to the traditional mask because it's a lot more comfortable uh, and it's go. a lot easier to take off so i guess you get that hockey one is fine but traditional is the way to go traditional is is dodger you know dodger for life that's kind of traditional mask good job is your walk-up song why i have the i have the tiger no it should it should probably be something you know like the real slim shady or some shit like that i, I have no clue so if that sizzle reel i get from you does not have at least at least Eye of the Tiger. I'm gonna flip some shit over, Cody. I may have to. I may have to. So that's something that the the you know our fans, our listeners, so they gotta look forward to. Just make sure to follow us on socials, and you'll see it. <laughs> yes, you guys need to follow us on social media because the hype video before his game is going to be lit. So. Look, we want to thank you guys all for joining us. We had a lot. I know I had a lot of fun on this live. Please spread the word. Let everybody else know. Join us. Uh, I, you know, we're sticking to every Wednesday. I know last week, because of Valentine's Day, the schedule was a little off. But look, tell your friends. We, we want more people on these lives. Bring the heat. Remember, we give out the Danny Duffy Award at every live. So we're all about throwing strays. And uh, Dennis Gonzalez, you get the last word today. And that is, hey, Juan, what do you know about the upcoming Ric Flair movie? Dennis Gonzalez, is this like a real movie? like, Or is this a documentary they're doing? Because I, there's so many misleading stuff about Ric Flair. Peacock has a documentary on Ric Flair that, that's so-so, I think. It's okay. It's better than the one that's on Netflix. The one on Netflix is old. But, Dennis, are you telling me that there's going to be an actual Ric Flair movie? Like and if they are, film? exactly, like a feature film. Because if they are, they need to get another actor. Because the guy who played Ric Flair in The Iron Claw, I, I felt so bad for him. Did, did you guys see The Iron Claw? I haven't seen it yet. I've seen some clips, but I have not actually seen it. It's a good movie. It's it's a good movie. But unfortunately, Ric Flair, not the actual Ric Flair, but Ric Flair makes a cameo because one of the Von, Von Erichs wrestled Ric Flair. And this poor guy that they cast to play Ric Flair, it, it just it's like he's playing an alien. He, he, it's like he's playing someone who doesn't know who Ric Flair is. So if they are making a Ric Flair movie, whoever's going to play Ric Flair, that is a very tall order. It's so like Ben that, Affleck playing Batman. It doesn't make sense. Hey, Dennis, keep keep us up to date on that. Uh, if you get more information, I'll keep an eye out on it uh, because I am curious. So that being said, we're going to end the show as we pay tribute to the great Ric Flair. Uh, this has been the Bleed Lows podcast. Thanks for joining us on the Carne Asada. Uh, thank you to Canelo, to, to Babyface, to Alonzo. Everybody, let's give a big woo here. Woo! And uh, this episode of the Bleed Lows podcast has been brought to you by betonline.ag, where the game starts. Nos vemos! <laughs>